In this video, I'll show you how to boost your website's speed and performance using the SiteGround Speed Optimizer, a free all-in-one plugin developed by the experts at SiteGround. This plugin lets you optimize caching, minify CSS and JavaScript, compress images, and improve core web vitals without any complicated setup. Even though it's designed for SiteGround hosting, it also works on any WordPress site, making it a great option no matter where you host your website. Let's get started. To install the plugin, go to your WordPress dashboard. Navigate to Plugins, add new plugin. Search for SiteGround Speed Optimizer. Click Install and then Activate. You'll see a new Speed Optimizer page in your WordPress dashboard. Before we start setting up the plugin, let's run a quick PageSpeed Insights test on my demo website. This site is running my Magma WordPress theme, which is already highly optimized for performance and loads fast even without caching. That said, caching is always a good idea. It helps reduce load times, improves core web vitals, and ensures a smoother experience for visitors. Let's see the current scores before applying any optimizations. Now, let's go through the settings and configure everything for best performance. Let's start with a caching tab. If you're hosting with SiteGround, you should be able to enable all three caching options. Dynamic caching speeds up your website by storing frequently accessed content. Memcached helps database-driven sites load faster by caching database queries. File-based caching improves performance by storing static HTML versions of your pages. There are a few extra settings under file-based caching, but most users don't need to change these. Next, let's look at the Environment tab. Enforce HTTPS. I recommend enabling this if your site uses SSL. Fix insecure content. If you have an older site with outdated file paths, Enabling this can prevent mixed content errors. It's safe to leave on even if you don't need it. Be cautious with scheduled database maintenance. This setting automatically deletes unnecessary data, but use it carefully. Spam comments and expired transients are safe to delete. Be careful with post and page revisions. If you check the wrong boxes, you might lose drafts or important edits. If you're unsure, manually clean up your database, instead of using automatic scheduling. The front-end optimization page is divided into three sections – CSS, JavaScript, and general settings. Let's start with CSS. Minify CSS is usually safe for all users and helps reduce page load times. Combine CSS files is safe for most properly coded themes. But this can cause issues with page builders like Divi or Elementor. If you enable this, test important pages in an incognito browser, especially pages with sliders or complex layouts. Preloading combined CSS is not always necessary. I test this last after setting up everything else. Now let's move on to the JavaScript tab. Minifying JavaScript is usually perfectly safe and helps reduce file sizes for faster loading. Combining JavaScript files can also improve performance, but before enabling this, check the list of JavaScript files that the plugin detects using the Exclude from JavaScript combination feature. For example, this test website runs on my Magma theme, which is very light on JavaScript. It has only two JavaScript files and doesn't rely on jQuery. In this case, combining JavaScript is completely safe. However, if your site uses page builders or multiple plugins, you might see dozens of JavaScript files. In that case, it's usually best to exclude the jQuery file from combination, as combining it with other scripts can cause conflicts. Deferring JavaScript files allows your page to load faster by delaying non-essential scripts. This is useful for improving performance, but it can also break poorly planned websites. If you're not a developer or don't know how to test for issues, I don't recommend enabling this setting. However, if you want to try it, enable Deferred JavaScript, then open your website in incognito mode and test important pages. 
look for broken elements like sliders, dropdowns or interactive features. If everything works fine, you're good to go, otherwise disable it or fine-tune exclusions. Next, let's go over the General tab. All of these settings are safe to enable, but two options require additional setup – Fonts Preloading and DNS Prefetch for External Domains. Let's go through both. DNS Prefetch for External Domains – This setting helps your website load external resources faster by resolving domain connections ahead of time. Open your website in an incognito window. Open Developer Tools by right-clicking anywhere on the page and clicking Inspect. Go to the Sources tab. Do a hard refresh of your page. On the left, you'll see all requested files. Find a file hosted on an external domain, for example Google Tag Manager, external fonts or other analytics scripts. Right-click on the file and select Copy Link Address. Go back to the Speed Optimizer settings. Add the domain name only to the prefetch list. Remove everything after the domain. Repeat this for every external domain your site relies on. Font preloading helps reduce layout shifts and improves your PageSpeed Insights score. In Developer Tools, switch to the Network tab. Click on the Font filter. Do another hard refresh. You'll see a list of font files loaded by your website. Preloading works best with up to 3 fonts. Preloading more than 4 is generally not recommended, but it won't cause any major issues. Focus on fonts that are visible above the fold. Copy the font URLs from Developer Tools. Paste them exactly as they are into the fonts preloading list in the Speed Optimizer settings. Now. Let's go over the media optimization settings in SiteGround Speed Optimizer. I usually enable image compression at the low level on most of my websites. This strikes a good balance between reducing file size and preserving image quality. I also enable lazy load media and remove all media types from the exclude list. This ensures that images, videos and iframes are loaded only when they come into view, which helps improve page speed. Finally, I enable WebP image format, which reduces image file sizes without visible quality loss. However, there are two things to be aware of before enabling this. First, if you upload original WebP images and later disable the WebP setting in the plugin, the plugin will delete your original images as well. There's a disclaimer, but it's easy to misunderstand what the plugin does, so be careful. WebP images are generated on multi-site installations, but browsers don't serve them correctly. SiteGround support is aware of this issue, but there is no known fix yet. Now that we've finished setting up the plugin, let's run another test in PageSpeed Insights. After enabling WebP and caching, the cumulative layout shift dropped to zero. This is great for core web vitals. And the page size was reduced, thanks to WebP image compression. Keep in mind that your results will vary based on your active theme, the number of plugins installed and the complexity of your content. It's also worth mentioning again that this plugin works best on SiteGround hosting. I personally host all my websites with SiteGround and most of my clients use them too because of their performance and reliability. If you're looking for a new hosting provider, consider trying them out. I've included my SiteGround affiliate link if you'd like to support my work. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions about SiteGround Speed Optimizer or WordPress performance in general, drop a comment below and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.